yeah. All right, let's mute that. All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Another episode of Hot Pudge IG Live with your host, Pudge Fernandez. That's me, uh, here every week. My schedule will change. There's a big heads up. Uh, when I first thought of this, it was always Sundays and Wednesdays. Now baseball is back. Yes, baseball, very happy. Um, I ain't trying to compete, so the schedule will be changing in, for August. I'm gonna finish out July for the Sundays and Wednesdays, and after that, I don't know. I'll put something up on my social media. You guys will see it. Still great interviews. I got a couple of great ideas. I want to do a series of uh, interviews with military comedians. We have a lot of comedians who served our country, including myself. And I did one for Memorial Day, but I want to do a slew of others from different branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and get their... Uh, Get their insight, uh, get their history as far as the military comedy. Uh, did how has how has uh, the military life maybe uh, helped the comedy life? Uh, I know it's helped me a great deal, and uh, yeah, just all good stuff like that. So uh, anyway, enough with that. Let's get our hot pudge IG uh, for interview for today, episode twenty. Uh, we have an awesome guest. Uh, they're all awesome. I know, I know. They're all awesome. But this guy, um, I love him very much. Um, I don't see him that much. I'm not there with him that much. We don't hang or, or we actually perform. I haven't seen him in a while. But you, I still know him, and he's just the sweetest guy. I met him, like, uh, very funny. Uh, a lot of training. Uh, I looked at his a uh, little actor. He's an actor. So that was that was the thing that drew me to him. Uh, first time I met him was like 12, at least 12, 14 years ago when I was when I had a open mic at the Laugh Lounge. And I guess I think, and he'll clarify, I think he just started doing comedy. He came to my mic and I was like, hey, welcome to the mic. You're a new comedian. But then found out that he was an actor also. And wow, he has uh, quite a resume. Uh, very impressive. He's got the skill, so that was always intriguing. But above all, uh, throughout the years, I've seen him grow. And he's a kick-ass comedian now, Frank Leone. What's up, man? Fudge, what are you doing, brother? How are you? I'm all right. I'm not bad. I'm in the military cemetery visiting my parents. Are they prior service? My dad, yeah. My dad was in the Navy. Oh, wow. Because I, I was just saying that I might. I'm going gonna, gonna to do a little... I want to do a segment with military comedians and everything, and look at you in the military cemetery. Isn't that crazy? I heard. I was listening to you, but I kept having bad service. I moved. I think it's good here. I think it's good now. Okay. Listen, yeah. we got some. Uh, I I can see it's clear. Are you at Calverton? I am. Okay, my best friend is in Calverton. Yes. Oh, uh, sorry to hear that. I bet, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, got it. He was a uh, automobile accident on a Marine base. Uh, fortunately he didn't make it, but, uh, but yeah, he's out there. I haven't seen him in a while, but yeah, I know where you are. My best totally. friend too. She was, you know, she's buried with her parents. So it was okay. crazy. it's why we're comics though. You know what I mean? I think all those things that shape us, make us insane and then make us funny. Yes. Yes, it is. Everything that makes us insane. Uh, speaking of it, it's, and that's the way I see you. And I hope you don't mind me saying it. Sometimes I see you like a little psychotic or a little, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I love it. I mean that because that's because how I see you sometimes is how I feel on the inside. I think that's why I love you. I think really respect you and your craft. You know what I'm saying? Thank it's you. Like, so I, think, I think I hold too much in. I'm, I'm trying to put my, you know, it's. Well, it's you like when, when you go to, when you go to like school to learn how to act. Like, I always thought that was my way out, you know? My dad was a janitor. My mom worked nights in a factory. And I had this thing that I loved to do. I never had good grades, but I was able to audition to get into school. Mm -hmm. And basically, what they do is they break you down. And they strip you down. And you, through a various stupid exercises, you learn how to be vulnerable and live in your emotional life. The problem is when you get out into show business, most of us don't get work. So you take this vulnerability and you work in the service industry or like me or, you know, life happens. My best friend committed suicide the same year both my parents died and then my sister got sick and died. And it made me fucking nuts because I didn't know what to do with all this emotion. So I started stand up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know? And the comics yeah. love it. In the beginning, I was gung-ho when I would do, like, 
bringer shows or guest spots. And I, I remember getting little restaurant jobs and I would, I would kill in the very beginning. And then something happened. I don't know if everything started to hit me. But then after a while, I started getting darker and darker and bombing. And uh, I, would, I bombed for like 10 years. <laughs> I would scream at them and tell them I hope that they got killed. I remember getting heckled in Dumbo. This one okay. girl, I was, a Seton Smith was on that show. I remember I was fourth. And this girl, it was at, I think it was Megan Hanley's show at a surfer shop. I was going to say Megan Hanley in a small, yes, yes. It's like a downstairs joint, I think. It was a surfer store. Like, I think they had it there a couple was it? times. Like I did something. Yeah, I was going to say Megan Hanley had something in Dumbo, I remember. It was like I some uh, uh, abstract place somewhere. It was just weird. It was, the one I was at was a store. And there was a girl who was, you know, we don't get paid, obviously. And there's a girl who was heckling every single comic. And nobody... Wow. Really, no one dealt with it, and I don't. I wasn't ready to deal with. Hey, Paige, I wasn't ready to deal with that shit yet. I didn't know how to deal with a heckle. It was maybe my fourth year in, but I wasn't afraid of them. I just would unleash all of my wrath on them and my grief. Yeah. So girl heckling. I remember saying, "My best friend walked into traffic and committed suicide and was decapitated, and I wish it had been you." I wish you were on these cobblestone streets of Dumbo dead. Like, that's how I dealt with that. <laughs> Talk about shutting down a room. You know, it's like, I didn't know what I was doing. But then eventually, I learned how to make light of it and make them like me and you right. know, make them laugh and not lose the room, you know? Yeah, one of the, one of the, one of the many lessons that we learn in comedy, and I think, I don't think... Uh, civilians non-comics understand that all hecklers are not the same right. there are different levels and different styles i mean it's not the nutty professor you know some type of that you know where we attack them right and it's not that they attack us sometimes they're just a pain in the ass who just won't shut the hell up and there's different levels in right. different ways and like you were saying you wish she was dead and decapitated on the cobblestones mm -hmm. of dumbo the thing is, may like, have been a little bit over the top <laughs> just a little bit maybe, of, oh, a little bit Maybe a little, a little bit. She was the worst kind of heckler. She was wasted and did it constantly. Uh, but still, that's not a way to. That's not a way to handle it. I think the way to handle it is for the host of the show to ask them to leave, for someone to police the room. Man yeah, management. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The comic has to deal with it. If it's that kind, then that's tricky. But. It should, it should be to a degree where you ruin it for everyone, shut down the room for the rest of the comics and you. Yeah. And was, I tell you, it it's, dark, it's still dark 10 years. It's nothing that we can avoid. It's something that we have to, act, we're, we're going to get it. And I actually, I fear it, but it's part of the learning phase. And I have to learn like yourself, how, cause I used to not address them because I was scared to piss people off with a venue or something. And it's okay. It's just, okay, are you going to hit him with a slingshot, with a hammer, or with a grenade, or a shotgun blast to the face? You know right. what I'm saying? Or a spitball. Right. Sometimes you just need a spitball. Just, right. and then that, that'll, you know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. And I love watching, like, I have my favorites, like we all do, but there are certain comics who, some will get mad, some will attack them. Yeah. And, and I usually, it's funny, I usually don't mention him in my favorites. I just don't think of it. But he's definitely up there. Big J. Big J Okerson. He okay. just completely chill when he gets a heckle. And it's like he has that room in the palm of his hand. And when he deals with a heckle, it's nothing short of brilliant. It's like when I see a tell. And I'm like, I never want to open my mouth again. They're brilliant. You know, that's what happens when you work for years in, in these circumstances at a surfer shop, at an Irish pub where they're showing a playoff game next to you on a flat screen. Yeah. Under, under the BQE at a pizza place on the patio, like Vicky Cooperman and Kendra had, which was amazing. I remember eating pizza. I love them. But it, that's the stuff that makes you leather. It makes you tough. Yeah. And... It's, and, and, yeah. yeah, and it's not all about the jokes and the material, but right. calling the room, 
calling the elephant in the room, or, you know, and things like that, that you just can't avoid. You can't be a comic and avoid those things. Right. And yet I hate it, but we need it. And it'll make us stronger. We'll get there. We'll get there. I still never hate it. It, ne it never ends. Yeah. Sorry, somebody. Yeah, definitely. Batavia, Illinois just called me. I don't know, but oh. it's not a collector. It's not a bill collector. It's going to be okay. Anyway, um, it never ends. You know what I'm saying? Getting better, bombing, it never ends. Killing and having the moments that make you think you'll never bomb again. Bombing and thinking you'll never write another joke again. All of it, it never ends. Or walking into a venue and it's just, you see those folding chairs and even though like your subway was late or you couldn't find a parking spot, you're 20 minutes late and they're like, oh, we'll start in about 20 minutes. That same sinking feeling over and over and over again. Or like, um, go ahead. No, you have to be a certain, something has to be disconnected in our heads to do I've always said normal people there's something there's normality about people who attempt something then fail acknowledge it and I'm not doing it again you see what you know what I'm saying like at some point you realize I'm not going to be a baseball player I'm not going to be a basketball you right. know what I suck at chess I'm not playing chess again and that's it but we start off and if not in the beginning, for a long time, we suck, 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 eat shit, go through these depressing shows, shitty, and we still want more. Truly masochistic, masochism at its finest. It's like, fuck it, bring it. I remember it. A show with you in Queens, and I was first, and I, I'll never forget, like, I was first, and I was relatively new-ish. I probably didn't think I was new at the time, but I was, and the microphone was broken. And it's like those things are just even now, though, a broken microphone is like But when I worked at Ha years ago and it was like Sunday at one in the morning or Monday at one in the morning. Those, all they gave me were these 1 a.m. spots. It was depressing, but I was lucky to get work. Yeah. I remember them saying, if you hold the microphone cord like this the whole time, it won't go in and out like. <laughs> oh, that. and then, you know, they'd forget about me on stage doing the check spot at one in the morning on a Monday. And yeah. They me up there. And I wouldn't, I remember this one show at Ha. There was, there were maybe 10 people there, but you couldn't see them. They were all against the back wall in the dark. Except for one dude in front of me with his back to me and his leg shaking with his back to me, not facing me, looking around. His back was towards you? Yeah, he was the only person I could see with a with a baseball hat, his back to me, looking at the room, looking at the audience, the empty audience. Ha was nuts, but it was like college. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a a lot. Yeah, a lot of the clubs and and once you get once you get in, it's like they're all little fraternities. Sure. And you're gonna get through a lot of shit. And there's there's yeah, it's it's a fun experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'd do it over again ten times. Uh, but yeah, it's, you got to be a little nutty. Yep. To do this. And, and, and it's hard to let go of it. It's hard to break the addiction once you get in the clutches of it. Yeah, I know. Away. Like right now, I really want to walk away. I'm getting unemployment and it feels so good to have a steady income. It's incredible, you know, because for a while, for the last year, for the first time, I wasn't tending bar as well. And I was just because of this gig I had with Lampanelli, which was more like a theater gig, even though there was some stand-up in it as well. Right. But because of the Lampanelli gig, I wasn't tending bar for the better part of a year for the first time. And still, it was like really living seriously day-to-day, -day, like dangerously day-to-day. -day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this unemployment and this chapter in time makes me think like okay what else can i do can i do something and maybe be not as obsessed and not as passionate but be able to order multivitamins on the web be able to pay my phone bill uh be able to buy nice vegetables whatever like simple shit you know what i mean not little... worry about getting evicted whatever your bills are or you know this is this is part of the art. This is part of the craft. Mm -hmm. It's it's a way of life. Let me tell you. Um, my son, uh, wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. 
and he 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 announced it when he was like in elementary school. And we you know, we 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 were talking that okay, that's sweet. Right. He he did have something, you know, he has some creative process in him. Um, he didn't do well in school. We had issues with his school, but then when he got to high school, he got straight A's, not in school, but in drama. Right. So he loved, he, had, he attached, his, he, yeah, that was his, all his A's came from drama. You now? now he's 22 and he's getting uh, his associates um, in the art, in the drama, drama program at the at a, at a community college. I started at Suffolk Community College and I had the best acting teacher I've ever had. Oh, wow. It was, you know, like I, I ended up going to SUNY Purchase and then I went to Yale Drama School for a master's degree. But my best acting teacher, she scared the shit out of me, but she was at Suffolk Community College. Yale, Yale was bullshit. And I owe over $140,000 for it. I was the poorest kid there. Um, and they now it's free. Now they give everybody a scholarship that gets in, which is how it should be. They have an obscene amount of money. But as it is for the rest of my, I pay $5 a month now in default. They wanted me to pay 800 when it wasn't. In default. They wanted me to pay 800 a month. I said, listen, you know, this is what promises you the world. And I can't get a fucking agent. So I'm, you know, I can pay five bucks a month. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I barely have that $5 a month, you know, and once you're out, you're out. Nobody's helping. Yeah. You. My classmates certainly aren't helping any, like the directors, they're not calling any of us in. So it's, it's kind of, you know, the students I went to school with, that's they rarely call any of us in. Wow. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, my son, my son's in Queensboro. Uh, he's yeah, about a, a couple of there. I have a friend that teaches <sighs> there in the speech drama, Mike Cesario. Yep. Mike's Mike's. Oh, I'll let him know. I'll let him know. Queensboro is great. Yeah. He's, great. he's about, he's a couple of, he's a couple of semesters away. And, and I've told him, uh, many times, you know, of course I love him and he has my full support. Right. Obviously I want to give him the support that I never got, uh, you know, because I know what that's like and it hurts. Yeah. But at the same time, because I'm in this game, I know what it takes and I know how it works. So I'm just I'm just trying to tell them, are you sure? Are you sure? This is what it takes. OK, they don't call it starving artists for nothing. Are you prepared to sacrifice? Right. OK, you can't your comfort level, you know, is the biggest sacrifice you can, you know, are you are you ready to sleep on the floor? Are you ready to sleep on a couch? Yeah. Are you ready to sleep in the car? Are you ready to have a roommate? Right. Are you ready to do shitty jobs? This is the craft. This is this is what you have to do. And and I and he I said, listen, I know, you know, I I work with comedians, I work with actors. I'm just letting and you and the commitment. You have to commit. You can't half-ass this shit. Right. So it's like I support him so much. And it's huh? the, thing that's, the thing that's tricky about it is it's easy to speak. Most people I went to school with have left the business and nobody goes to SUNY Purchase or Queensboro, the theater program or Yale to quit. Everyone thinks that they're going to have a career and, oh, it's going to be scary and, oh, we're going to work hard. But until you actually live it and experience how impossible it is just to get in the room and to get an audition and the idiots that you have to go through to get to that the stupidity that's behind the desk and then over the years when like i have a, a friend in comedy who's brilliant who goes <laughs> he goes those are people who go past me as i've been doing this for 20 years <laughs> and he's brilliant and you'll get somebody who's young and cute and maybe not so funny like I remember a girl who started years ago and uh, who <laughs> unfriended me recently on Instagram. It's sort of like people, when they unfriend you, they think it makes them bigger. And it's like, no one knows who the fuck you are except for a handful of comics. You're still a nobody, even though you're acting like a shit heel. Stuff like that, as small as it sounds, after a while it plays with you. It's because it's an idiot's game. It's so stupid. It's like you were young and cute and you got a break. You know, but you it burns when you know you're funnier or you've worked really hard. You know, it's hard to say I'm going to work real hard until you're in it. You know yeah, what I mean? I, 
it, I'm telling you, I, I, my son is like, he has my full support. It feels weird. I'm almost trying to scare him out of it or scare him into know what it is. Anyone saying would. I would, Cause, if it yeah. were my kid that I loved more than myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing how painful it is and yes. Yes. literally like what the odds are. Everyone buys a lottery ticket thinking they're going to win it. And I was 110% sure I'm not done. I'm not yeah. dead. No. But like, for example, the seller, I can't get Esty to see me. And I've had some of the best comics in this city recommend me to her. I can't even get her to see me. There's no reasoning behind it. And yet somebody who's new or green or comes here from Europe and says, I have a big career there, will get an audition. Some things are just mean and they don't make sense. And you want to warn your kids about that shit. It's, yeah. It's and, and, and on top of that. Hard and reap the benefits of it. Yeah. You know? no, and on top of that, what you're saying is 100% true. And what I noticed, and this is why I've kind of changed a little direction during this pandemic, uh -huh. is everything you said is true. Now you throw in the technology and social media into the mix and somebody like Frank Leoti, it can't get seen by a club owner. But if uh, Sally Joe Schmo comes in with 500,000 followers and it's not half as funny as Frank, as Frank Leoti, she's going to get the open door. Right. That's because of some right. that's, number. That's the, way, that's the way it is, you know? Um, scary. It is, and yet, if you're really bitten by the bug, like it sounds unfortunately like your son is, Yeah, it's this thing, like I'm in therapy and she's forever trying to get me, she thinks I'm not looking at something, she's forever trying to get me to look at why I have to do this thing. It's like being in a relationship that doesn't give back, and I can't answer that. I don't know why. I really don't. I had great parents. I was lucky. They worked nights. We were broke. But there were no shortages of I love yous. You know, we didn't go on vacation and we didn't go out to eat or whatever. But they were loving. So it's not like, I, I don't know, was I not seen? Like, why do I have to do this? But I have to. Like, I remember Edie Falco. I wrote her a letter years ago and she said to me, it's tough, but when it's good, it really is so good. You know, it, I, you know it, we're, we're I don't know what it is. We're, we're creatures. We have this thing. I don't know where it got implanted, how it got implanted. I understand what you're saying. Like you had two great parents. I was on the flip side of that. Mm -hmm. I came up in a broken home. My mother was narcissistic. Uh, my step, my stepdad um, worked his ass off, but he never communicated. Uh, mom never listened. He never spoke. Uh, you know, I, so I feel I fit that description of, of what you think a uh, comedian should look like or have background. Comics for people become comics for many different reasons. Yeah. Like for me, I think it was. I probably like I didn't know what was different about me when I was a little kid. But when you're a little gay kid way before it's about sexuality, something about you is just different. You're, so I was withdrawn. Um, I was painfully, painfully shy and over, yeah. over, very sensitive. Yeah. Um, I was, I was just afraid of the world and because I must have had some kind of secret maybe. But then when I got older and, you know, those formative years where I remember someone I had dated, we weren't together at the time, came down with HIV back when HIV was... Yeah. Shit. And yeah. then with my mom and dad dying three months apart, my best friend being decapitated a year later, my sister getting cancer and living another year all in a row. That's what made me a comic. So for me, it was my adult life that was really brutal. Not to mention getting out of school. I remember like being behind the bar at Freeman's downtown and I had to wait on a wedding party of kids I had gone to school with, a gay wedding. And I felt like 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 a male, it was humiliating. Like those are the moments of humiliation where it's like, is this worth it? I'm waiting on my classmates who are at this fancy restaurant, and we were on the same level, but were we ever really on the same level? That's the shit part. Yeah, I, I've had. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I remember barking in the village, and I saw somebody from high school, a, a, a pretty young girl. Yeah. 
she didn't even, she barely acknowledged, she acknowledged me to her, the person she was with, but she didn't acknowledge me. For those, like, for, those, for those of you in the room, Julie and Paige and Tim, what Pudge is talking about barking is when you stand on the street and you yeah. hand out flyers for your comedy show. And you, you still have to do it, like when you're on the road in Provincetown and stuff, but or when you do your bar shows, you stand outside, or you do it for stage time, you stand outside yeah. and you're yeah. barking. Like Sarah Silverman talked about, some guy picked her up by the neck when she was barking years ago for Boston Comedy Club. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's what that is. I'm getting in my car because it's getting it's getting dark out early because it's gonna storm. I'm gonna yeah, get yeah. Bright light. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I know that. I th I think we all hit that, or we all get that somewhere along the line in our Absolutely. career. We all get that 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 feeling of humility, that that self question. You know what I'm saying? Like, what yeah. am I doing? Is this worth it? Or like another friend of mine who's got a, a good career, decent, not famous, but she has a good, good, good career that most of us would kill for. It's like getting hired to do a big show and everyone comes to see what the big, you know, big to do is about. And then you bomb. <laughs> so it's like, that shit's painful. You know, you know what the best thing is about being at this cemetery in Calverton? Because I'm, a, I, it turns out I found that in January I have diabetes. So I went on a plant-based diet, like a vegan diet. Cause yeah, how did... That reverses it. So I lost like 80 pounds. And I don't need any kind of medication anymore. I'm eating, you know, raw broccoli and hummus and raw this and raw that. But the thing is, it's almost like an alarm goes off in your body. And you have to give birth to a fucking monster and get to a toilet yesterday and the best thing about this cemetery is the bathroom never closes and it's spotless and no one will ever come in when you're taking a shit ever <laughs> okay so this is because you changed the vegan uh definitely more regular right okay you know what i'm saying it's 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 like wow uh, what's weird is like you know eating all these raw vegetables and stuff like right around five o'clock every day, I'll have to like run. I'll have to go to a bathroom. You said you lost eighty pounds. Yeah. I How was, long did it take I you? Was up to two eighty. Wow. I started in. But here's the thing. Let's say I lost fifty pounds because fifty-five pounds. Even though I lost eighty, I lost fifty-five because when I first got sick. Slowly but surely, I remember going to the doctor and they said my weight was 258. I'll never forget that. And I was like, wow, last time it was at 280. One of the symptoms of diabetes, one of the early symptoms, it was, is an inexplicable weight loss. So the diabetes ate some of those, ate about 25 of those pounds away. It was like a great perk to getting a debilitating illness. Does that make really? sense? Really? Yeah. It sounds up. Um, I've been told I'm pre-diabetic, okay. but I haven't been told I am. So when you're pre-diabetic, this is a perfect thing. Now is really the time to read a book about it. Read Reversing Diabetes or read How Not to Die. These are like the two books that a doctor recommended to me. And I thought, first of all, I can't read a book like that. It's self-help and I won't be able to get past the, past the first page. Secondly plant-based diet like not even a tuna sandwich or eggs as someone who lived on like steak and cheeseburgers i'll never be able to do it the thing is i ignored those warnings of being pre-diabetic and then i started to lose my eyesight um i started to get sick all the time and then suddenly i like my whole body broke down and it was like i had it was like i had the flu it was like i had a covid like illness it was a brutal Wow. In bed for a week, and then I went to the hospital, and it was full-blown diabetes. So, and once you cross over into full-blown diabetes, there's no going back. So I would say to you, if you are pre-diabetic, try as much as you can to do something about it. Well, I've already started. This whole pandemic has kind of uh, jump-started me again with my health. 
because to be to watch this COVID Corona thing unleash, and you keep hearing, and you, I'm sure you've seen it on the news. If you have pre-existing conditions, right. pre-diabetic, asthma, high blood pressure, and you're elderly, Full I'm three out of four. What's that? I'm, th I'm three out of four because I have high blood pressure too. Well, it's con it's totally connected. God yeah. damn shit. It's totally connected. When you, like they say that having a heart issue, like uh, high blood pressure or Alzheimer's, high blood pressure is diabetes of the heart. High blood, uh, Al Alzheimer's is diabetes of the brain. And this doctor, wow. a bunch of doctors, their theory is that it comes from animal fat, even more than like just white sugar and rice. And, you know, when they made me go to a nutritionist after the hospital, she was like, you know, have a small portion of steak, cut down on red meat, you know, try to have whole wheat pasta instead. If you do a diet like that, like they tell you to, it's, it, it, they gave me a handout that looked like it was from the 1950s. Have as much diet yeah. soda as you like, blah, blah. It was nuts. Those diets that lower your sugar immediately, eventually you have to go on more and more and more medication. And then the complications like amputation and stroke and heart attack start. Whereas when I started to read these books going on a plant-based diet, that's when they lower for good. But you got to You got to eat the. Uh, you got to eat the the way to do it, the plant-based way, and it's really not hard at all. I really because I have. A, I mean, I don't have a problem with cooked vegetables. It's the raw vegetables that I just can't get used to. You don't have to. And the thing is, you, your palate totally changes. I'm a, I'm a food addict, and I got into it. No, no, I'm an emotional eater. That was one of my issues. Big time. Uh, I, used, I used to be an alcoholic. Uh, I quit three years ago. Uh, I had to go to treatment. So that was, I was very emotional and very aggressive with mm -hmm. the alcohol, and I'm like that with food. Me so, too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm at the phase. Like right now, I'm, going, I'm doing laps every day. Uh, I just bought some vegetables, but I'm going to juice it up. Does it matter if it's in a juice or raw? Or I, mean, I have a juice, a piece of my juicer broke, but I have a juice in the morning because oatmeal was sending my sugars up. This is the first time in my life I've done this for non-athletic reasons, for non-cosmetic reasons. I've done it to be healthy. And first of all, I, I got to be honest with you because it helps other people. My penis was gone and I was like, oh, it's because I'm getting older. It was because I wasn't healthy. I wasn't well. You know, I had erectile dysfunction. I was snoring where people would think it was a joke in the next room, like when I was uh, touring and stuff like that, which is yeah. which contributes to heart attack and stroke. Um, and that's gone now. So it's like, it's just not, I bought a $20 steamer on Amazon, which now when I, I noticed, I looked to buy another one, it went up to 30 during the pandemic because people are disgusting. But getting into like steamed vegetables, steam, yeah. eventually it becomes delicious. And eventually, no, the I can do steam. I can do steam. They just have to be cooked. And I like it nice and soft. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know. That's fine. That's okay. Okay. Uh, if you just want checking. to talk to you more about it, I sent to Stefano the book, Reversing Diabetes, just so he could learn about it. Because we all have the food thing. The three of us all do. Yeah. And, uh, it's really, it's, it's interesting to me. I never thought I'd be able to do this. Well, that's great to hear. Because right now, as we speak, uh, I'm in the, we're in the process. I'm in the process. I've been doing laps because this pandemic is like, shit, I'm on, I'm on the hit list. If I get it, it's going to hit me harder than anybody that's else. That's how I was, too. And, and it's fucking scary. And I want to get back to some kind of a fighting weight, you know? Yep. Because I really, yeah, I really let myself go over the years. And I know the alcohol had a lot to do with it, but now that's out of the picture. So I got to focus on this. Right, right. And um, my, my name is Pudge, and I don't mind being Pudge, but I can't be a fat, overbloated bastard. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. Pudge yeah. is cute. I want to be pudgy cute, not right. over, yeah, right. obese. I, almost, I was up to almost 300. I think I was 284. That's Which crazy. I, I've, I, I've, I mean... The, what I remember you, I don't think I've ever saw. I don't. I must have never saw you at two eighty, because that would have been something. 
first of all, I think that I, I'm lucky in that until like it really got bad, I was pretty proportioned. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like, Some of I, us, yeah. I, high, high, yeah. My, my head got thicker, but I didn't have like this fat look. Like I, I remember I took a headshot during that time. And somebody saw that and was like, oh, you know, it'd be nice if you could get back to that weight. And I'm like, that was the other, that was last month, you asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I hit it well. But then I do a show at like, you know, McFickerty's Irish shithole bar. And someone would take a picture on Facebook and I would take my name off of it because I looked like a bloated fucking rodent. You know what I wow. mean? Wow. Yeah. But it's really, it's not, it's not hard to once you get started like for me it's because i it's you know like the way an alcoholic gets bottom for me yeah. i hit bottom because i got sick and all i could think of was being an amputee or having a stroke which i already my blood pressure is still high they say this reverses heart disease and high blood pressure it hasn't done that for me no so are you on a medication for blood pressure i am i'm on something called okay. sartan because the other one I was on made me cough and isn't good for diabetics. Okay. Yeah, I got, I, I got, sir, I got uh, one, two, three, four. I got six pills a day. One of them is an aspirin. The other are five that I got to take a day for my high blood pressure. I got to send you the books to get. Yes, text them to me, please, or, uh, or Facebook. I love, I love talking about this because people give it a shot. Like a couple of people have written to me. Because when you get scared, it, it can call you to action. And then before you know it, like, look yeah. how long we've been in this pandemic. It certainly doesn't feel like it's been since January, but it had, you know, February, whatever, but it has. No, the, the, it, it's scary. And it's also pissing me off because in the beginning, I'm an Uber driver. The city gets shut down. I'm like, OK. And I'm thinking and then I see all these, you know, if you have asthma and all this other stuff, I'm like, oh, that sucks. And I was just thinking, yeah, maybe I'll go back to work September, October. Let me wing it. You know, um, I reach out to my doctor. She gives me a, you know, a phone call checkup. And, and I said, hey, I was looking, you know, you know me. You know my body. Uh, I was thinking of going back to work in September, October. And she was like, listen, are you getting unemployment? I'm like, yeah. She was like, are, are you doing okay? I'm like, yeah. Well, if there's no need. You know, don't go back to work if you don't have to. Right. Wait. Right. Don't take that chance. Don't take that risk. You know, wait a little longer. You know, maybe maybe November, December. You know, and she's just telling me, don't rush back to work if you don't have to. If right. you're okay, if you're getting unemployed, she goes, don't. Don't take the chance. Let, let them be the guinea pigs. You stay home and just keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Look what's going on in the South. Look at Florida. My God. The smugness with regard to, like, I ain't getting it. Like, the, the whole, you know, the fish stinks from the head down. The whole Trumpy kind of, you know, it's a, doing a it's, mask. And, and look at the numbers are astronomical. Let me, I have friends there. Let me tell you. Funny story. So when this pandemic started back in March, early April, uh, my Army buddy called me from Texas. Because we were, we were in the news. We were peak. OK, yeah. we were we were Corona yeah. Central. He's like, yo, what's happening? Are the numbers real? How are you? You know, he's checking in on me. And I'm like, yeah, the numbers are real. The number one hospital in Queens that's getting hit hardest is right down the way from me. And it's crazy. And and we were talking and I said and I'm like, how are you guys in Texas? He goes, we're cool. No problem. I'm like, awesome. And I said, listen, you people just need to watch us. Just watch us. Whatever we do right you follow. If we fuck up, that's cool because you'll already know. All right. you got to do is sit back and watch us. Fast forward to a couple of weeks ago. I'm calling him. What the fuck is happening with yeah. Texas? He's like, he's like, dog, I got it. He got it. He got hit with it. He got hit with like for three or four days. He was out, but he, he recovered. But I'm like, dude, I told you. What are you doing? Right. Right. What but are you doing? You have, it's, be, it's become politicized, which is crazy to me. That's what doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's like people, people, their lives are at stake. And for some reason, it's become Republican against Democrat. It's, it's, like it's, a, it's not. 
a sign of weakness if you wear a mask. It's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's not, it's not an economic decision. It's not a political decision. It's just a health. It's a health thing. Do you want to avoid getting sick? Right. right. Period. That's it. Yep. I don't know how it, it got spun. A lot of finger pointing. Now it's a sign of weakness or a sign of toughness. I, blaming, how does a mask... Blaming, the Republicans, so many people were blaming Trump, and then the Republicans turned around and blamed Cuomo for senior citizens getting sick. And it's like, wait a minute, New York, we're the example for people. We're the example. At one point, Nassau County had more cases on a daily basis than the state of California. And now California's like ready to snap off of the continent with illness. It's, yeah. it's fucking, it's really, it's really crazy. And, and, and Florida was the most upsetting to me because I think we all know as New Yorkers, half of Florida is ex-New Yorkers. Right. <laughs> half of Florida right. is deep. And I'm like, yo, you're, hello. How, how do you, you know? We, you, all you had to do was watch us. We're your family. We're your friends. We weren't lying to you. Forget the news. You could have called us directly, and they probably did, and you still didn't listen. I don't get that. That's that, nuts. A friend that I've that, known since, I don't know, the late 80s, I got into it with her on Facebook. Like, some guy on one of her feeds wrote some, like, hard during, at the at the peak of the Black Lives Matter movement about four weeks uh, ago, wrote some that was another. hardcore, brutal, yeah. racist shit. And I thought she should have called him out on it. And somehow, this was all tied in with people wearing masks and I, them not, and Trump and 2020. And it's just all gone so topsy-turvy and so upside down. As opposed to just being yeah. safe, they say we could eradicate it if the whole country wore a mask for a month. That's what yeah. they've been saying now. I don't yeah. know if that's true. It sounds good, but yeah. it's sure as fuck it, is worth a try. I, I, I mean, and what hurts even more and what's upsetting, and I'm trying not to think about it, but we're, we're already guaranteed to be screwed for the next four years as far as political, because it doesn't matter who wins. Right. It doesn't matter. We're all, we're already set up to fail. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because the the the, the oh right the, Economic, if, economically alone, what are we gonna do? That's why I guess all all you can do is like again with me as well. Asthma, high blood pressure, and type two now type two diabetes. I was pre diabetes. No, we we're I, battle buddies. We're battle buddies. This is good. So <laughs> what I've been focusing on is getting more into like. Uh, my niece bought me last Christmas an Instant Pot, and I just Google Instant Pot recipes for diabetics or vegans or whatever. And I'm telling you, like, eventually, like, within two flu some people like one of our friends who posts on facebook thinks he'll never be the same again because he still gets recurring exhaustion and he doesn't think he'll live to be as long as he thought he was going to like he's still sick from months mm. ago and other people die so it's like russian russian roulette you know uh, when it comes to my health uh yeah i, I don't i'm not i'm not gonna spend, i'm just going in the right direction right now uh, never mind what everyone else thinks. I like where you're going. I think I'm, I think I've already started because I just I just went to the market and got some fresh fruits and vegetables. And uh, I think I'm I think I'm heading. I'm gonna try some of that, and I'm gonna look into the Instant Pot now. And definitely hit me up with that book because I'll look. I'll definitely look into it. Uh, yeah, just coming in a little broken.
Yeah, I, I got you. But yeah, uh, the yeah the sound's pretty good. The video's coming in broken. I think the storm's coming. I think you're. That's that's my goal. I don't I don't need no more heartache. I've already got my heart broken enough. <laughs> I'm not gonna break my own. But yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to. It. I'm excited now. I'm excited. I definitely definitely. I, 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 my doctor told me I've been I've been pre-diabetic for years. I've never crossed the threshold yet. She just says, you know, you're pre-diabetic. I'm like, okay, maybe I took advantage of that. Maybe I get, yeah, I'm, I know I did. I know I think, okay, I'm pre-diabetic, so I'm I'm okay because I'm stupid like that. Oh shit! Now I think uh, now you're coming in. Damn! Now it's breaking up. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, food food is definitely. I think uh, it, it's an emotional thing, and also I had a mom. It's an emotional thing, and I think, and also I had a mom that didn't exactly know how to feed a child properly. There was plenty of food, sometimes too much. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't about okay, you're gonna eat your vegetables. He just, she said, okay, it's time to feed the baby, and threw food at me. So yeah, that was. But uh, it's a, yeah, but that was then and. Just a bad mix. Just a bad mix to, to lead me to where I am today, or overly pre -dive. Oh, man, Frank. I'm, you're still a bad connection. Yes. Ah, oh, Frankaholic left. Uh, let me see if he checks back in. Yeah, a lot of people. It happens. It's not Frank. It's not Frank's fault, okay? It's uh, every now and then. And because if you saw, he's in Long Island by the Caberton Cemetery, and when he was there, the – there was no rain. It was totally clear because uh, he was outside. So obviously it wasn't raining, but it's fucking storming here in Queens. That's where I'm at. And we had some heavy thunder showers and it was pretty nuts. So it's not Frank's fault. It's, it's the weather. Blame the weather and technology. Should have been better, but um, awesome to have him. Frank, if you're there, yo, God bless. Love you. Thank you for the, all the advice uh, and the motivational speaking. Yeah, never blame Frank. God damn it. It's not his fault. We know. We know. <laughs> I love him, man. Wow. Wow. It's like we're – it's so – wow. That was pretty cool because we're, we're battle buddies because he has asthma and pre-diabetic and all that stuff. So it's like, oh, shit. We, we're definitely battle buddies and we can relate now. And, wow, what timing. It was, like, weird I because I, I, he's talked to me about plant-based diets and eating vegetables and all that good stuff, and I just went to the market because I'm leaning there now. I'm like – I've already changed my diet, um, more, more soupy, vegetables type of thing. My carbs and sugars, I'm just dramatic. I mean, I, I'm a coffee drinker, but I'm not having any sugar in my coffee. Drinking a lot of water. As you guys see me for the past interview, seltzer, flavored seltzer, water, no more soda. Uh, thank you, Shorty D. And yeah, I, got, I mean, I want to be pudge. I don't want to be fat motherfucker. There's a difference. He pudges cute. Pudge is cute and, and funny. Fat motherfucker, no, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't invite him other than to a buffet. So, yeah. Is it less expensive? Wow, it's also less expensive. Oh, that, that shit. I, w I would love that. If eating vegetables means it's less expensive, holy shit. Uh, I think my thing is um, I can't eat them raw. They have to be cooked. And so, yeah, he gave me some ideas as far as the steamer. And this Instapot. So whatever, I'm down. I think, I don't think I'll go full vegan. Uh, I think, but, you know, but I, I definitely, maybe once a week, maybe have some beef, maybe chicken, definitely more fish. So, yeah, thank you. I want to be around a long time too. And fruits and, ve yeah, fruits, definitely fruits. I already started. I got some pine. As a matter of fact, my snack tonight is pineapples. All right, it's pretty cool. 
when you change your eating habits, you learn new things. I can buy a pineapple whole and I know how to cut it up. You ever like not buy a fruit because you don't know how to cut it? Like, how the fuck am I going to cut this? How am I going to chop it up? Uh, I went to YouTube and I learned how to properly cut a pineapple. And it's pretty, there's a couple of ways. There's, a, there's, there's like a really high speed way where you get, you know, max fruit and less skin and you got to, I don't know, it, it was too hard. But there is a basic way. And I thought it was pretty cool. So looking forward. I want to, I'm looking at vegetables. You ever go to the um, supermarket and you see these fucking vegetables and you're like, how the hell do you eat that? How do you, how do you eat? What's leek? First of all, what's leek? You ever see leek? It says leek. What is leek? It's a green vegetable. I don't even know, you know, how do you make leek? What do you cook it? You fry it? You soup it? Like what is leek? Like I heard a leek soup. But what is it? Do you chop it? Do you peel it? What is, you know what I'm saying? And, and the beets. I know beets in a can, but then you look at that beet and, and it just it looks nasty and it's hard. And I don't know. I don't know. So there's a, so, but, but hey, that's, that's, that's part of the, the fun of enjoying and getting to know these vegetables and, and these different fruits. So, yeah, looking forward. Uh, keep following. Keep watching. You might, you might see me get thinner. And I'm going to lose a couple of pounds, get back to my fighting weight. So, uh, yeah, should be fun. Uh, hey, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see more episodes, uh, you want to see my uh, six feet, six questions, my Corona-style interviews that I did out in the street with some comedians, or you want to see some of these Hot Pudge IG Lives, go to my YouTube channel, Hot Pudge Sunday. Hot Pudge Sunday. Sunday like the day of the week, Hot Pudge Sunday, and you'll see all my videos. Even got some stand-up there. You can see if I'm funny or not. Go check it out. They're only about three minutes each. Say, hey, is this motherfucker funny or not? Feel free. Click on. Comment. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. I ain't scared. All right? Pudge Fernandez, guys. I'll see you guys next Sunday with another guest. All right? Hot Pudge IG Live every week. Hot Pudge Sunday, the YouTube channel. Peace. Thank you.